Επεπόθησεν η ψυχή μου, του επιθυμίσε τα κρίματα σου διέρω, αλληλούια. Πλύνουν την καρδία μου, εις τα μαρτυρία σου, και μη σπλεώνε ξύαν αλληλούια. Μέτοχος εγώ είμαι πάντων των φοβουμένων σε και των φυλασσόντων τα σέντο λάσου Αλληλούια, και νύχιαοι και στους αιώνας των αιώνων να μην αλληλούια. Κύριε Λέησον, κύριε Λέησον, κύριε Λέησον. Κύριε Λέησον, Κύριε Λέησον, Κύριε Λέησον. 
Παρασκοτήριε, Lord have mercy. Αμήν. Ότι εγενήθη όσα σκώσεν πάχνη τα δικαιώματά σου ουκ επελαθόμην ελέησον με Κύριε. Από τον κρυμάτων σου ουκ εξεκλίνα ότι σι ενωμόθε της άσμε ελέησον με Κύριε. Καιρός του πείσε το Κυρίο διασκέδασαν το νόμο σου, ελέησον με Κύριε. Now never to the ages of ages, αμήν, ελέησον με Κύριε. Νεότερος εγώ είμαι και έξω δενωμένος τα δικαιώματά σου ουκ επελαθόμι. Αλληλούια. Άρχοντες κάτε διώξαν με δωρεάν και από τον λόγο σου εδηλίασεν η καρδία μου αλληλούια. Επλανήθην ως προβάτων από λολός ζήτησον την δούλη σου ότι τα σε δολάζω ο κεπελασόμι. Εμπλογητός η Κύριε, δίδαξον με τα δικαιώματά σου, ο Πάλεμεν εκ μειώντων πλάσας με και εικόνη σου θεία τιμή σας, παραβάσι εντολής δε πάλι με επιστρέψας, εις γυναίκς νελήφθη, στο καθομείο συνεπανάγαγε το αρκαίον κάλος ανάμορφος αστέ. Ευλογητός η Κύριε, δίδαξον με τα δικαιώματά σου, ανάπαυσον ο Θεός την δούλην σου και κατάταξον αυτήν εν παραδείσο, όπου χωρεί τον Αγίον Κύριε και η δίκαιη εκλάψου, συνός φωστήρες την και κοιμημένη δούλην σου, 
она повшен, парурона в тиш, падата климата. Και <Sessizlik> Alleluia, 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 doxa tio Theos. Alleluia, 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 doxa tio Man withers like a flower and passes like a dream, and every man comes to end. And when the trumpet will sound again, the dead will rise like in qua a quake to greet you, O Christ God. At that time, grant, O Lord, that the one you have taken from us, the soul of your servant, Την μεταστάσαν έξι μόναν άπαυσον εν θα πάντων εστιν εφρενωμένον η κατοικία. All is vanity in human affairs, all that cannot be enjoyed after death. No wealth is kept, no glory can follow. For once death has come, all of these are lost. Let us say therefore to Christ, the immortal King, give rest to the one departed where the blessed live. Indeed, the mystery of death is awesome, how the soul is suddenly set separated from the body, and how the natural bond of being together is cut off by the divine will. So we pray to you, O life giver and lover of man, give rest to the one departed this life in the company of the just. <laughs> 
το πλαστούργο σου γέγονε προσταγμα, πουληθείς γαρέξα ώρα του τέ, και δυνάτης με ζώων συμπήξε φυσαίως, γήθε μου το σώμα διέπλασας, δε δόκας δε μη ψυχή, τη θεία σου και ζω ποιο εμπνεύσει, διό Χριστέ την δούλη σου, εν χωραζόντων, εν σκηνές δικαίων, ανάπαυσον. I recalled the prophet when he said, I am dust and ashes. And then I looked in the graves and I saw the bare bones and I said, who is this? King or soldier, rich or poor, righteous or sinner? Yet, O Lord, in your loving kindness, rest your servant with the righteous. My beginning and my essence come from your creative command, for it was your will to make me out of visible and invisible nature, a living being. You formed my body from earth and gave me a soul by your divine and quickening breath. Give rest, therefore, O Lord, to the servant in your land of the living in the company of the righteous. <laughs> Την κατοικόνα Θεού, πλαστήσαν η μην ωραιότητα, άμορφων άδοξων, μη έχουσαν είδος, ο του θαμάτος, τι το περίμας, του το γέγονε μυστηρίων, πως παρεδόθη μεν τη φθορά, και συνεζεύθη μεν το θανάτο, όντως Θεού προ... Προστάξει ω γεγράπτε του παρέχοντο τη μεταστάση την ανάπαυση. Δόξα πατρί και ιό και αγίο πνεύματι, ο θάνατο σου κύριε. Αθανασία γέγονε πρόξενο, η μηγαρε μνήματι κατατέθη. Ο κανό παράδεισο είναι οκτώ. Διά την μεταστάσαν ανάπαυσον ω φιλάνθρωπο. Και νυν και αή και ει του αιώνα των αιώνων αμήν. Αγνή παρθένε του λόγου πύλη του Θεού ημών μύτη. Η κέτεβε. Ελεηθήνε την ψυχή την αυτή. Remember us, Lord, in your kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. <laughs> Blessed be the way you are going today, for a place of rest has been prepared for you. Upon your column, my God, the readings from 
from the first epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians. Wisdom. Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep so that you will not grieve like those who have no hope. Because if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so must we believe that God will bring with Jesus all those who have died believing in him. For this is the Lord's teaching we tell you, we the living who survive until the coming of the Lord will in no way meet him ahead of those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. Uh, uh, uh. Peace be with you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto you all. With your spirit. The reading is from the Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, o Lord, glory to you. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, Truly, truly. Truly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man." Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father, who sent me. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great mercy. We pray you hear us and have mercy. We also pray for the repose of the soul of the departed servant of God, Maria, and for the forgiveness of all her transgressions, voluntary and involuntary. The Lord God may rest her soul with a just repose for the mercy of God, for the forgiveness of her sins. Let us ask of Christ, our eternal King and God. Let us pray to the Lord, O God of spirits and of all flesh, who overcame death and vanquished the devil and gave life to your world. The same Lord give rest to the soul of your departed servant Maria in a place of light, in a place of happiness, in a place of peace, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. Gracious and merciful God, forgive every sin committed by her, whether by word, deed, or thought, for there is no one in the sin. You alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant Maria, O Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory with your Father, who is from everlasting, your all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, our hope. Glory to you, Lord of the living and the dead, the immortal King and risen Christ, our true God, to the intercessions and prayers of his most pure and holy mother, the glorious and forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of Lazarus, the friend of Christ, and of all the saints. Commit the soul of our departed sister Maria with the righteous. Give her rest in Abraham's bosom and count her with the just. And for us, have mercy as a good, loving, and merciful God. May your memory live forever, our blessed and ever-memorable sister. May your memory live forever, our blessed and ever-memorable sister. Eonia imnimi, Eonia imnimi, Eonia.
of this By the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Please be seated. I thank you all for coming this morning. Um, I know there would be more if we could have that. And I know there are more watching at home. So I would be remiss if I didn't share, take the opportunity to share just a few words and some, a few thoughts. Because um, in times of distress, such as the death of a loved one, it is fitting and natural that we look to God and the church for guidance, support, and comfort. In response to our felt need, the church gives us the funeral service and the prayers that lead up to it, the trisagion that we prayed last night. And from these, we receive the comfort and guidance we so earnestly desire. To begin with, we learn that it's okay to mourn and not should mourn the loss of our beloved because who we are is defined in large part by our relationships. Mary was a wife, she was a sister, a mother, a grandmother. When those relationships are severed by death, it strikes to our very identity, and it hurts. And so we mourn. But St. Paul tells us in the epistle we heard this morning that we ought not mourn like those who have no hope, because death cannot end our relationships, it can only change them. In fact, those who precede us in death, according to St. Paul, will also precede us in the resurrection. We will see our loved ones again. We'll see Mary again. And in the meantime, we have not only the, uh, the hope of the resurrection, but Mary's intercession to pray for us unceasingly in the very presence of God. Through this process of mourning and in the funeral service, we also come face to face with the fact of our own mortality. We are reminded that each of us will walk the same path our, our own time in our own turn. Most of us tend to forget we live, of course, in a death-defying, death-denying culture. In spite of all the blood, violence, and death we see in movies and TV, in our own lives, we try to avoid the topic. We put off writing wills or making final arrangements. We act and talk like we're immortal. We don't have the freedom to do that today. We can't pretend today. I remember in seminary, uh, we had a, a, a priest pass away, and they did the funeral at the seminary, and many of the young men who were getting ready to serve the church had never been to a funeral, had never been in the presence of death in as real a way as funerals bring it to us. And it was eye opening for them, because they came to the reality, the fact of their own mortality. As the ascetic fathers of the church have it, they tell us that the memory of death is the beginning of wisdom. So confronted with death, we have the chance to consider our own mortality and properly align our perspective. All is fleeting vanity, says the writer of Ecclesiastes, quoted in the funeral service. And on this day, this occasion, we should evaluate our focus. Is it on the things of this world which are fleeting, passing, and lead to death? Or is our focus on eternal things? Because in the end, all that we can take with us is our relationships our relationship to God and Christ, our relationships with family, friends, and our relationships even with strangers. What are we doing to strengthen those relationships, to build up those treasures in heaven? Are we neglecting them? The prophet and King David, when he was still a young boy, was a shepherd who tended his family flocks in the Judean countryside. In addition to leading the sheep to good grazing and water, he was responsible for protecting them from wild animals. In the midst of dangers, Young David was still faithful enough to pen what we know as the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David begins the statement of faith that the Lord will provide all that he, all that he needs. He will want for nothing. And he goes on to illustrate the provision and providence of God. What stands out in particular today is, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Two tools, a rod and a staff. The rod is a weapon, a stick used against predatory animals. The staff, the large hook that most of us have seen in the pictures, that are used to guide the sheep and retrieve them from precarious situations. Both tools are needed in the cross of Christ. In the cross of Christ, death is defeated. The predators kept at bay, and we are all granted life. We, the sheep, rescued from our justly deserved fate by the mercy and work of Jesus. It is this we celebrate every Sunday in the divine liturgy, and it is in this that we take comfort at this time of loss. Though we say goodbye to her today, we know that Mary will be with us so long as we remember her. St. Paul tells us in the Apostle that during the funeral service that we, though we mourn the loss of our beloved, we don't mourn like those who have no hope because those who precede us in death will also precede us in meeting Jesus at the resurrection. They get to go first. We know that death is not, death is not the final end because Jesus has trampled down death by his death and granted life to those in the tombs, granted life to Mary. So Paul reminds us of this again when he speaks of our final victory in his his first epistle to the Corinthians, where he writes, Now this I say, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mary is experiencing the first taste of that victory now. And though parted from us for a time, continue to pray for us even as we continue to pray for her until that time when we are all reunited in Christ. I pray that the Holy Trinity be with you all this day and throughout the week and through us as you mourn. And may God grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lefteon, Aspasmon, Lord. 
domena ver pitita nushi evkaristu desteon aptigar exelipe tishige nia shafti te prostafon epigete uketi prodijusha tatis mate otitos te poli moktu sarkos uni
Yes. Go ahead. I'm in church, okay? Okay. Take care. Angelo, Angelo, more of the same thing again, eh? Yeah. Yeah, this shop now be here an hour early, yeah. 10 o'clock. Yeah. And what else? What about? Who's coming tomorrow? Then, oh, the yeah, father. father John. Uh, a bit. Yeah. That's him, right? Yeah. Father David's not going to be here. No. Okay. Father John. Okay. 
If you don't mind, you know, unlock the door for me. Oh, yeah.